Now let's look at a very interesting uh, disease. Uh, interesting because it's one of the oldest diseases uh, described. It's even found in the Bible. Um, however, it is um, a term that has been used to uh, show other outbreaks. Uh, but plague as a disease is um, a very interesting disease. So, so um, we're going to define it, look at the causative agent, and go all through up to the prevention and control measures. So, as I said earlier, this is a highly infectious and contagious disease that leads to um, uh, death ultimately, but it's caused by a bacteria. And uh, the bacteria that causes this disease is called Yersinia pestis. And basically, it's a rod shaped uh, bacterium discovered or first described by a bacterial, uh, bacteriologist known as Alexandra Yassin in 1894. And uh, he ended up giving it. Uh, his name, Yersinia. So as you can see, these are gram, uh, the, the gram negative bacilli, uh, which are basically rod shaped. So um, the vector, because this is a vector born basically disease, um, the Yersinia is carried in a, in a rat flea. So basically a, the classical oriental rat flea, which is known as the Xenopsila uh, chiophis, that is actually um, the rat flea that is responsible for uh, carrying around the bacteria and then transmitting it to a human host. So the life cycle of uh, this flea, basically, we have an adult form, um, <clears throat> which uh, basically gives out the eggs from, by the female um, uh, flea and into the environment. The eggs end up hatching into a larvae, which end up uh, becoming a pupae, and uh, the pupae basically uh, mature into an adult. So the transmission is interesting because ideally, the, the rat flea is uh, not supposed to be biting human beings because it is normally found in the um, what we call the wild rodents. So it, is, it transmits the, the bacteria, or it bites one rat to another rat, um, like that between the wild rodents. So in the wild rodents, uh, basically the presence of your senior pest is endemic and it's something that uh, is always there in that population. But as we continue with other things like uh, um, urbanization, um, uh, what, we, what happens is that we end up having um, a, a decrease in the amount of uh, wild rodents and then we have no domestic rodents so the flea now the fleas now en end up um, biting uh, the the domestic rodents and now these domestic domestic rodents also they start dying and the fleas also end up now doing what <clears throat> the fleas also end up now biting the human host so it can be the fleas um, transmitting it directly from the from the rats or a close interaction between the domestic rats and the human host can lead to uh, an outbreak. So basically, once when one gets it, you end up getting a bubonic plague, and that normally leads to some um, you forming bubos or bubos are basically um, enlargements of the lymph. And then ultimately you can um, go to the blood, and then you have sep uh, a septic kind of uh, plague, and then it can also affect the, the, the lungs, what we call pneumonic plague. And now it is in the lungs, when somebody coughs, they cough it out, or they cough the bacteria out, and it, it is passed on through aerosols. And that's when it becomes highly, highly inf infectious, when it can be transmitted through inhalation. So as I said, uh, the pathophysiology is basically get a bite uh, from the uh, rat flea, and then the rat flea basically regurgitates the blood uh, from um, the flea. And remember, that's where we have the Yersinia pestis, and then it contaminates that area. And then the bacteria has a tendency of a bit or ability to survive phagocytosis, and then it reproduces, ending up in the lymphatics. <coughs> And especially in the lymph nodes and leading to enlargement of the lymph nodes and we have lymphadenitis happening. So this, this uh, enlargement in the lymph nodes is what we end up calling bubonic. Then it, that can seep to the bloodstream and remember these are gram negative bacteria, it has endotoxins, the release of these toxins leads to necrosis of tissues 
and we end up having what we call septicemic plague. So it is uh, shown by necrosis, ischemic necrosis of tissues. Then we have pneumonic plague, as we said earlier, is that, um, since now it is in the blood, it can end up in the lungs and in the lungs. You have it affecting the, <clears throat> the pulmonary system. And then once uh, one coughs, they can pass on the, uh, the bacteria. And then that's what we call pneumonic plague. So you'll have coughing, wheezing, and uh, hemoptysis because the lungs is affected. So this is basically what I've talked about. Uh, what we call so we have a sylvatic kind of um, cycle where it's 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 rotating among the wild animals, but it can also go and uh, the flea can also bite domestic animals, or what we call the domestic cycle, and then it can also end up biting a, a human being, end up having a bubonic plague, it goes to the blood, you have septicemic plague becomes pneumonic plague, then you can easily uh, keep on transmitting it. So the three clinical manifestation, bubonic, which is the commonest and basically swelling of the glands appears quite early on. Um, then septicemic plague, this is due to initial infection, onset is sudden, and then you start having other systemic problems like uh, uh, fever, weakness, and all that. The pneumonic plague, we have lung involvement, this takes a numerous infection or basically it takes time before it uh, it happens and you ultimately end up having it being very infectious the lung being affected your pleural effusion and death can also occur so as you can see we can have death gangrene or meningitis occurring as a complication and i think you've seen where gangrene uh, occurs now management is quite easy because this is um um this is uh, basically a bacterial infection. So the drug of choice here is streptomycin and it's given one gram twice daily as an injection, okay? But other drugs that can be used are gentamicin, tetracycline, doxycycline, and cotrimoxazole. Now prevention, early diagnosis is best because sometimes even if, if, even if you have the treatment options but you have discovered it's quite late, then necrosis has happened and all that, then that becomes irreversible at that point. Um, for, for those parts that have been affected. So it is a disease that has to be reported to the World Health Organization. And uh, chemoprophylaxis is a good uh, treatment for all people who have had contact. Quarantine and isolation is a good preventive and control measure. Then insecticides to kill the fleas and rats should be killed and basically making the environment quite clean so that we don't attract the, uh, the rats. <clears throat> so uh, we should also have the public uh, officers being notified together with the public that this is what is happening. Now, once one gets this, if it is untreated, fatality is high. We have 40 to 60% um, uh, death rate. Okay, but if one is treated, you see the fatality goes quite down. Uh, but pneumonic cases, if untreated, it's a certainty that you'll die. The fatality rate is 100%, and treatment must be started within um, within the first day, basically. Okay, Sub septicemic plague has a 40% mortality rate. So as you can see, this is a disease with a very high fatality rate. And uh, if one is affected, then uh, it becomes a big problem. Okay, good.